I have a couple of videos that I could show you uh, because I think that <clears throat> we've talked about when to order images and what you should what you should think about. But I think the next logical step is about well, how do you communicate with patients about imaging findings then? And I have a couple of videos that that shows you some examples. Maybe maybe we should watch those. Great. All right, Kate, I've got your MRI reports and I've got the MRI scans which we'll go through and I'll tell you a little bit more about what's going on in your back. I'm so excited to see my scans. Can you tell me what's wrong in my back? Yeah, so the reports highlighted three main things. Um, the first being that your, your discs in your lower back here, which you can see here that I'm running over here, they're your lumbar spine discs and there's evidence of some uh, disc degeneration. Now what that means is, is that the discs themselves are less spongy and there's less fluid content within them. And you can see here clearly, if we look at the ones above, they're nice and white and, and bright, indicating really good amounts of fluid. And the ones here, which are, are corresponding and in the area of your pain, are, are, are blackened and there's less water content and less sponginess. There's also some uh, evidence of bulging uh, of your lumbar spine discs. And you can see that here at the bottom at this level and the one above, you can see the blackened areas in, indenting in and around the spinal cord. Um, now, the, the report is shut saying that there is no compression of the nerve roots, but that may change over time. These discs do have the ability to move and, and these bulges may worsen over time. The third thing is that the facet joints here, which I'm pointing to here and here, are also showing some signs of arthritis as well. Right, okay. I'm so glad I now know what's wrong with my back though. No wonder why I'm getting so much pain. Do you yeah. think I should consider surgery? Um, yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's really, we don't truly know if any of these features here on the skin are correlating to your pain, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a second opinion on this. Okay, I'm a bit confused now. I should have just gone to a surgeon after all. Yeah, so, so you can hear here that this clinician, he really, really likes to talk about these imaging findings <laughs> and he talks at length to the patient. And if I was a patient, I would become very upset about the state of my spine after this. And as we just discussed, these are findings that are very common, also in people who don't have back pain. And we are really uncertain about what they mean for the prognosis of the patient. So this is, I think, a report of findings about images uh, as it should not be done. So maybe we can move on to the next video where I think uh, he communicates in a more helpful way. Okay, welcome back. We've got your uh, MRI images and we've got your uh, report from the radiologist. Sweet, I'm really excited to see them. Can you tell me what's wrong with my back? Um, the good news is there's actually nothing here that we can see on your scans that are explaining your pain. Like, can't you see anything? Yeah, yeah, we can see lots of things, and as the, does the radiologist, uh, we get to see bones and we see muscles and tendons, joints and ligaments, but all of which um, are, are not explaining your pain. So there's nothing I should be worried about, no reason to see a surgeon at all? No, there's nothing here on these images um, that suggests um, surgery will help or that we need to send you um, to surgery or for a surgical opinion. And we've got some of the best radiologists here in the country that are reporting these images. And I'm really confident you'll have a great outcome. It's very different. So I, I think that, that that's very different and a more helpful way of communicating it. Maybe he should have said to that that there's nothing seriously wrong with your back after, after having seen these images. I can say with confidence that there's nothing serious wrong with your back and, and reassure the patients of that. And, and just compare that to the first video where he, he kind of went into details about every little finding. Um, so, so I think the second way is, is more helpful. And I, th I think the therapist seemed to be very aware of even labeling the smallest thing that he could see on imaging and almost not saying anything about it because I'm, I mean, my experience in the knees, people often hear, even just in passing, like we said before, every little single word and label, patients can pick up on something and, and, and they don't understand what they're looking at. They've never seen an MRI before. They don't know what a disc bulge is. It sounds really scary. They don't know what a cartilage lesion is. They don't know what degenerative facet joints or osteoarthritis means. So I think it's just, yeah, very, 
interesting that nothing was really mentioned, anything pathological in that second video, whereas to direct contrast with the first, obviously. But I, I, I think we, if we look at the last slide here, I, it, it kind of summarizes how I think you should communicate imaging findings that um, we should normalize degenerative changes and not emphasize them as something bad. Um, many radiologists and clinicians use the term degenerative disc disease about discs that have some degeneration, but Listen, if we, if we take a look at a, a picture of my face or of many people over 50, uh, you will see wrinkles and gray hair. So we should actually label them as having degenerative face disease. <laughs> and we don't do that. <laughs> I can't see any wrinkles um, on you, Jan. You look very young. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that must be good lighting here. <laughs> but we, we have... Uh, a great need for research and actually clinical trials, randomized trials, where we test different ways of communicating imaging findings to patients and how they influence patient perceptions and ultimately outcomes of care. And I think we have some really low hanging fruits here uh, about uh, improving patient beliefs and perceptions and maybe influencing outcomes of care too. But but it, it's, uh, it's kind of virgin territory for research. And, and, and I know there's some studies underway, but we need much more research in this area about how we can, what can you say, become responsible consumers of spine imaging, because that's ultimately what we want to do, uh, knowing that it's, this is wonderful technology. So if you were to have your perfect world, what would, oh, I'm not sure what my question is, but how would you use imaging in, or where would it be placed in your clinical care of people with back pain? Well, it'd be for people where I suspect a serious underlying medical condition where imaging is known to be helpful. Uh, people with uh, radiculopathy, that does not improve. Where you're considering uh, surgery, uh, definitely imaging can be helpful in that clinical decision making. But that's, and then maybe if you have really high levels of patient anxiety where they just insist and won't progress with anything unless they have this imaging, sometimes it can be helpful and it puts the patient's mind at rest. Um, uh, but but I, I really think we should, <clears throat> we should work at three levels in order to become responsible consumers of spine imaging. Uh, we should work on public health beliefs. Um, it, 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 we have some false expectations uh, in, among people in the population about how spine imaging can be used and how, how useful they are. We should work on clinicians, of course, uh, that they should be more cautious in ordering these images and, and, and order more appropriate images. But we should also work with healthcare systems and decision makers to make it more difficult to, uh, to order images. In my country, Denmark, for example, we have a universal healthcare system. And if you want to come in as a person with back pain and you want to attend, for example, a series of, say, the GLAD back program, a series of uh, patient education and exercise sessions over some weeks, there's quite a high out of pocket expense for you. But if you want an MRI of your spine and the doctor orders it, it's completely free. And that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, so we need to, need, to, need to work both with the population, the patients, the clinicians and the decision makers in order to, to, to improve in this area. Mm, lots of room for improvement. Um, I don't think, uh, did you have anything else to add on the imaging side of things? Otherwise we'll leave it there and I'm excited to go on to the more of the self-management and, and treatment approaches in the next session. No, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. Perfect. Okay, well we'll uh, finish up with imaging and be back shortly with self-management for spinal pain. <laughs>